Hello and welcome to Upside Down. Happy New Year and I wish you all the best in 2021. It's been a while since my last video, but I've been relocating from France to the UK and finally everything is done. I also just finished my setup and immediately started recording. I'm back with my usual schedule, posting two or three videos each week, which are going to be tutorials or questions on different topics about game development or 3D art that you're interested in. Today is going to be our first video for this year. A while ago, I mentioned that I got very interested into scanning assets and recreating scenes. And this is exactly what you're seeing on the background. This is a castle that I've recently scanned. And there are two softwares that I mostly use for getting all the images and stitching them together so that I get the 3D model. First one is Meshroom, I did a video a while ago. It's a completely free software that you can download and try it yourself. It works pretty well in most of the situations. The second software is something that I want to talk about a little bit more today and this is Recap. I've been using Recap for the last 4 or 5 months and I would say that I'm pretty happy with it. Especially there are a few features that I want to talk about today that makes it a little bit better in my opinion from other softwares that are at the moment on the market. So without further ado, let's roll the intro and after that I'll show you how I edited my images and got everything inside Recap and also what options we have after that for exporting our assets. So first thing that I did after taking the images, for which I actually used a drone to take, was to import everything inside Lightroom. I shoot in RAW so that I have the ability after that to make adjustments to the images. Most of the time I don't really need to adjust anything except moving a little bit the exposure so that the exposure in between all the images that you have taken is kind of the same. You really want the images for the asset that you are scanning to be kind of flat and as well to be almost on the same level of brightness and contrast so you get the best possible result and as well help the software with the stitching. You can see that these are already the images that I've edited for this asset and in total it took me around 120 photos to be able to scan this asset. So one thing that you want to do is this image here, you see that it's a little bit brighter than the one before that. I prefer the way that everything looks over here because it's not that blown out and this one is a little bit too bright in my opinion. So what you do is just you go to the adjustments and after that on the exposure you can tune it down a little bit so that they're kind of the same. Once everything's done you can just select all the images that you want to export, right click, export them and of course we are going to use a JPEG and we are going to export it on the maximum size. Now that we have the images exported I'm going to open Recap and here what we do is we need to select either we are doing an aerial shot on an object. In my case I scanned a whole area so I'm going to use an area. I already finished the process of calculating this exact model over here but once you click the create button here on the bottom you're going to see your images going to be uploaded to the cloud. This is one of the features that I actually really like about Recap and something which helped me quite a lot when scanning outdoors. Before when I was going to scan something outdoors I was going just with my camera so I didn't know exactly the result of the images that I had and this meant that if there were some images that were not good enough or something blurred or something which is not okay I had to go the next day and retake the whole asset. You can't really do it all the time because as for scanning outdoors you're really dependent on the weather conditions as well. So having the ability to calculate and see how exactly my asset is going to look like right while I'm still outside is something which for me was very beneficial and helped me to speed up my workflow super a lot. Another plus is that those images are being sent to the cloud so everything that you need is actually just an internet connection. You don't really need to have a super powerful computer or laptop in order to have your asset calculated. Everything is being done on the cloud, after that you just download everything and you can see the result while you are still out there taking the photos. This means that if you want some additional pictures you can just go take those and bring them back to recap. So now let's open the file and I'll show you what exactly we have as options to export. Once you click it this is how your scene is going to look like. You can, you can see that it's a little bit different from the one that uh, you saw inside 3ds Max because, because I pretty much just cleaned here this background which uh, I didn't need but the rest of it uh, you see that uh, the capture itself it's very high quality also the result for the whole stitching and everything which uh, the software did is absolutely amazing 
I was not able, of course, to scan inside because with such objects you are able to fly only around, you can't really fly inside them. But anyway, I was able to scan uh, well enough, at least a little bit from the walls. And once we have our asset calculated, we can, of course, just look around and see how everything looks like. And uh, if we are not happy, we can always come back, edit it, add some more pictures and then get even better result or if we are happy with what we have, here from the export button, we can export either an image, which is going to create an image from the view that we have at the moment, or we can export a video, or the method that I usually use because I'm getting everything after that inside 3ds Max and ZBrush for making some small adjustments, export it as a model. This is going to open us the menu on the side, and here we are going to have a couple of options. First, we are going to have different type of formats. I prefer FBX, then we can select that model to be Y up or Z up, which is at the moment Z up. And then we have the target face count. This is the number of faces that this asset at the moment has. From the slider on the bottom, we can reduce it. We can export it with the full face count or we can lower it to a percentage that we are happy with. Then we have for the textures, we can either rebake them, original ones or no textures when we are exporting. And then we have the size. We can export everything into one 8K texture, 4K or so on. Or we can say to recap, to split everything into multiple 8K textures. This is something which I'm using because I want to have the maximum possible result on my asset before getting everything into 3ds Max. And then from there on, I can scale down if I need. And the last thing which is great on the very bottom is what kind of maps it will generate. First, we have the diffuse color, we have displacement and we have normal map. I usually use diffuse color and normal map for sure because after that I'm getting the low poly models and then from there I use the normals and diffuse to rebake everything into my low polys. But also for some surfaces I was using the displacement and it works great if you want to create after that a tileable texture. So once you have everything into the settings that you would like, you just click the export button and then you have your FBX or OBJ file to the folder that you selected. This was a quick overview of Autodesk Recap. I'm currently working on a full series to show you my complete workflow for scanning assets and after that editing them and getting them inside a final scene. I'm going to keep you updated on the channel how exactly that's going and when the videos are going to be available. Once again, Happy New Year and thank you for the amazing support. Last year we hit almost 5000 subscribers. This is just unbelievable for me and I'm super grateful and I really really like that you guys enjoy my videos. Thank you for watching and see you next time.